Um, it's great to see everybody. Um, yeah, especially the day before a holiday. I know it's a little bit of a weird thing. I, I, well, I guess less, you, guys, you have Friday, though, to like, you know, skip out of work, right? So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, we'll see how it goes around here. I'm not sure who we'll see on Friday. Um, anyways, uh, I'm Ben. Um, I'm a developer here at Gaslight. I have been doing development longer than I like to ever think about. Um, and, but I was thinking about it. I think everybody that I work with has still been born after I started, or before I started development. So that's still good there. No? Go. <laughs> um, so good there. But I've been doing, um, uh, it's, I've always been in like the web development side of things, uh, different places, freelance for a while, other agency type work. Um, can, consumer tech media companies, uh, that kind of thing, startups. So I've been around for a while and had, had the uh, pleasure of seeing uh, the remnants of waterfall processes back in the day. Um, and glad that I know Agile now. <laughs> um, anyways, um, Agile Distilled, um, I kind of wanted this talk to be kind of boiling down of all the things that are out there. Agile is a very overloaded word. Um, and I've, I feel like I've come to like a, a boiled down aspect of it that lets me kind of apply that sort of core concept to um, whatever problem that I'm running into. Um, and granted, like um, this title is a little bit weak, but I'd like to think that I approached this in an agile manner and did the important part first, like you know the body of the presentation. <laughs> and uh, you know we can always I can always use a feedback process to get the title tweaked later. But anyways, um, so the kind of the talk today in general, um, I kind of want to talk about first about like what you see. Uh, when you go to a, um, into a company or interview somewhere and you know, they say they do Agile. You know, how do people describe what they do as Agile? Um, then I kind of want to talk about kind of the root concepts of Agile and then my take on it. And then also um, <clears throat> talk about, I want to spend some time going over a couple scenarios where you know, things just don't feel right with the development process uh, and you know, how applying some of the Agile concepts, you know, not an Agile tool, not an Agile whatever, um, how understanding those concepts kind of helped us get out of that funk. So, like I said, when you, when you go into some place, uh, you know, you go in and talk to, uh, say, I don't know, Fifth Third or Kroger or whoever, and they say, oh, we do Agile. Um, <clears throat> they start using words like, you know, oh, we use Trello, we use Jira, or uh, Fabro is another tool that we use here at Gaslight. It's kind of like a Trello Plus. Um, and these tools are really about like kind of record keeping and um, I don't know, keeping uh, track of the flow of work through your own process. <clears throat> There's usually some sort of agile process. Also, I, I mean, the word process is not, I mean, there's another overloaded word, but you know, if some people say, oh, we do scrum, we do one week sprints, two week sprints, four week sprints, whatever they may be, um, or we follow a Kanban process or SAFE, which is scaled agile framework for the enterprise. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so they're the processes, and then usually there's some sort of words about um, activities that are done to help with shared understanding or help with planning. Um, common one that we use at Gaslight is story mapping um, and empathy mapping. Um, two very good processes that allow us to like, quickly talk to a client, understand the, the problem, and you know, map it out to units of work. Um, and again, I just kind of wanted to stress that like, these things in themselves are really just tools. They are not agile in themselves. You know, you can use Trello with a waterfall process. <laughs> you know, you can use Trello to not really be agile. <clears throat> and I think, you know, especially when you are trying to determine um, where, like, how to, what, what tools to use in your environment, I think this is where, you know, a lot of like, agile coaches and agile consultants, I think they have a lot of, 
broad knowledge about, oh, well, you have this sort of setup in your organization. I think Scrum would work for you, and this is how you could do it. I think this is where some of the, like the business of Agile, um, so you know, the certified <clears throat> Scrum masters and coaches, I think they can really help identify a good place to, you know, to apply a tool or, and that kind of thing, so. Um, there's also, in you know, an agile environment, there's usually some sort of ceremonies or meetings in other term, in other words. Um, <clears throat> Stand-ups, retrospectives, and I said planning, just in general. Um, <clears throat> Stand-ups are, you know, important to, and, you know, I, I would probably say daily uh, is probably the important part. Um, they're there to assist the day-to-day movement of work through your process. You know, identifying things that may be hindering you, um, incorporating feedback that was learned recently, um, and just kind of keeping things flowing through the system. And this is, you know, stand-up is important for that sort of high bandwidth in-person or a verbal communication um, <clears throat> to get, make sure everybody's on the same page about what is happening today. And really, if you do a daily stand-up, you can limit it to today, um, which is key to keeping stand-up short and, and that kind of thing. Um, retrospectives are another really important part of an Agile process. Um, this is the opportunity where people can kind of take a step back from the day-to-day -day delivery and say, huh, okay, we worked on this and you know, we worked, we did this amount of work in a certain period of time. Um, a lot of times retrospectives are at the end of a sprint. Um, if you're using sprints, like, like, a, like two week sprints, um, if you're using something that doesn't have like a, as a well-defined points, you can certainly do it at some other regular basis. But the important is to have some sort of regular retrospective where you can reflect on what you did since the last retrospective um, you know, what's the, what experiment did you try to do to improve your process over that time frame? Um, what worked, what didn't, what's a new thing to try? <clears throat> um, yep, and then the other piece of, a, you know, a natural process is some sort of time for planning. Um, if you're using something like Scrum, where you have defined two-week sprints, you need to take the time to say, okay, what are we gonna work on for the next two weeks? Um, uh, in more of a Kanban process, uh, we usually, um, it's more of a, like a continual planning uh, where you're like somebody, you know, a product owner or scrum master is kind of working um, to figure out like what's next. Like they're talking to the customer about, you know, what's the next most valuable thing to do? Let's get that higher up in the backlog. Um, as, or in the, the up next queue, whatever you may call it, and go from there. <clears throat> um, the other part of this, and this is really, this is a tricky one um, because there are so many, with an, an agile team, um, so many different flavors in lots of different places, and a lot of this is really driven by, you know, your, your staff makeup, you know, like, you know, who are the people who deliver the work? Um, you know, what's your total size like? How, you know, what's your hiring process like? What's your organ, like, there are lots of other constraints that make team makeup hard to like define. Um, the important part, I think, for um, an agile team is really, it needs to be a very, I don't know, it's cross-disciplinary, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, whatever you want to call it. Um, it needs to involve all the people required to deliver a unit of work. Um, most commonly here at Gaslight, we have designers and developers. They're usually working simultaneously on uh, delivering software with, and they have to, you know, the designer input really helps with the experience aspect side of things. Um, but both of those roles are needed f to deliver software. Um, you know, other places I've been, there's a QA person involved um, because that's, that may be part of the process at that particular company. Um, you know, that person needs to be involved 
throughout the process to under so everybody has shared understanding um, and they know what needs to happen to deliver like a cohesive piece of work. Um, I'll say like, you know, like there is like the typical Gaslight team. Um, we love to have a client product owner, a client based product owner who, um, who works with us every day, sometimes in person, preferably in person. Um, and I, like I said, it's a small team and cross-functional necessary. And the other key of this thing is like having, having the teams feel, have at some level of autonomy. Um, when you have an agile team that is functioning well and knows what they need to do, um, you can just give them a problem and they can work within their constraints and what, the constraints that they know of the rest of the system to deliver a good solution. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not fun for an Agile team to say, to get something, say, like a task list and say, here, do this thing. Uh, it's just not fun. We're, you know, we're creative problem solvers. Um, so give us a problem and we will do it. We're not automatons, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better term. So anyways, it's hard to describe teams and like a, a typical like what you see typically, because it is very different everywhere. <clears throat> so with that kind of description, of like, and you know, those things are really like how you describe Agile. It's hard to say, you know, I don't know, there's probably a good example out there somewhere of, of where words kind of lack the actual description of what, <laughs> what the thing is. Um, so there are some core concepts, um, and the way I kind of like to, like the reason I like being able to know like the core concept is it kind of gives me a framework for making decisions when things go wrong. Um, it's kind of like a mission statement um, about like, uh, you know, if a company has a mission, you say, but in, like you're faced with these multiple decisions, you're like, okay, which one satisfies my mission, right? They, that's kind of what I, that's why I like to know the framework of, of everything. <clears throat> um, so just to start with the core concepts and kind of what makes up things. <clears throat> there, in 2001, Agile Manifesto was published um, and it was very much a reaction to the waterfall, the typical waterfall process has, processes at the time. Um, and so I will actually going to, I'm going to read these out loud because they're pretty important, uh, you know, and as opposed to just, you know, like you don't usually like to read a slide, but <laughs> um, there are four main concepts, um, individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. And you know, when you think about these, they do definitely feel like a reaction to that waterfall process where you know, some company says, okay, I need a requirements document that describes what, I need, what needs to be built. So there's this comprehensive documentation process that happens and you know, sometimes people, people used to spend a lot of money on requirements documents. Um, and then so that conference of documentation gave a plan and that plan, uh, you know, invariably failed after it was started because it just doesn't capture the nature of, of everything. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, relying on a requirements document to, for contract negotiation is never fun either. Like, you know, we'd much rather work with the customer, get something that they need and is useful instead of trying to spend you know, a week or two or arguing about like, well, okay, we're gonna deliver this product by, or this set of requirements by this date or not. Um, so this is like the Agile Manifesto. It's been around 18-ish years. Um, <clears throat> and we still refer, you know, we still think about this today, you know, we, We've toyed like every once in a while somebody in Gaslight says, oh, hey, we should print that stuff out and put it on a wall somewhere. <laughs> we have some empty wall space, um, but you know, we just haven't yet. 
Um, but anyways, we still refer to this uh, a lot. Um, so it's definitely withstood some test of time, but there's always room for improvement. <coughs> there's a more, well, modern, uh, the, there's another set of, again, four concepts that have been termed modern agile. Um, and they're definitely, they definitely feel a lot more modern. Um, this uh, make people awesome, <laughs> right? Um, and this feels, you know, when you first read this, you're like, oh, that's kind of touchy-feely and, and bubbly or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, but really the core of this is empathy. You know, we need to, we need to be empathetic about our users. Um, we need to, like, make their job awesome. You know, we need to make them awesome. We need to make our team awesome. Uh, I don't think the documentation really talks about the actual algebra team itself being awesome, but I, that's what I want to do. Um, so, I mean, really, like, can we make, a, can our thing that we're building make somebody awesome at their job? Making safety a prerequisite. Um, I think it's pretty well, um, I don't know, accepted that you know, to have a really high collaborating team, you know, a high performing team, you really need, like, people need to feel safe presenting their ideas, trying things out. They need to, you know, be safe about, you know, I don't want to be fired by, you know, I don't f worry that I'm going to be fired for having a bad idea. Um, there should never be a thing. Uh, also, the customers also need to be able to say, hey, yeah, this process that I used to do, that you're being told to do now, just doesn't work, like, it's, we don't do things that way anymore. They need to feel comfortable in their own organization to say, hey, let's try something different here. <clears throat> Experiment and learn rapidly. Um, I think this really goes hand in hand with making people awesome and um, the, the safety. You know, in order to produce something awesome, you know, the, t the team and the customer needs to be able to experiment and learn about their product, about how they use something, about their own customers, um, about how people use the software. Um, and when you have a safe environment, you can do that. <coughs> uh, and finally, uh, delivering value continuously. Um, this, you know, I gotta say, this also happens to be one of Gaslight's core values um, and also corresponds with the uh, working software over documentation concept in the Agile Manifesto. Um, I think it's very important that there is always a focus on delivery because, or delivering value, I say, getting something delivered because that's when you actually get real feedback from the customer. Um, <clears throat> you get feedback to work to work on next um, feedback about an experiment that may have succeeded or failed. Um, and we can't make people awesome without actually delivering something. And there's a nice little graphical um, representation of those four concepts, so. <clears throat> well, and then also, I'll do a quick shout out to uh, our, you know, downstairs, this is on our wall downstairs, these are our core values. Um, and really, you know, we're practicing empathy, you know, we're making people awesome. Um, safety uh, for, for me, and I can map back to the trust is everything. You know, I'm trusting that my team is giving me feedback that I need. I'm trusting that my customer is giving me feedback. Um, and I'm trusting that I, you know, am being told that I'm doing a bad job or a good job in the right way, so. Um, and continually de deliver value, um, definitely a key th focus for me at least. Um, so with all those, with Agile Manifesto and the, uh, the modern Agile, I kind of have like my simplification of this and you know, I called it my simplification but it's probable that I called it made an oversimplification. I mean, generalizations suck, right? <laughs> so I'm sure I'm failing at some point here. Um, but to me, um, Agile means like identifying the most valuable thing to do, the next most valuable thing to do. Um, getting the feedback, keeping it flowing, um, and getting it quickly. And then really improving ways to do those other things. Like, um, and you know, constant experimentation is really key to that thing. Like if you're not experimenting, um, 
with your process, with getting feed, like how you're getting feedback to the customer uh, or from the customer, um, or identifying better ways like maybe that isn't the next most valuable thing to do and like let's, or we're having a hard time figuring out what that next valuable thing is, like what can we try to figure that out? Um, and you know, like I, I, I have other notes here. This, this is the, the tough part about presenting is like I have this flow in my head that doesn't match what I've written in the notes, which, you know, and I end up with some blend of the two. Um, but anyways, you know, learning what the next most valuable thing, it requires that safe environment. You know, it requires that I'm practicing empathy and it focuses me to start with the customer collaboration. I don't know what to build unless I'm talking to the customer. <clears throat> and I don't want to be negotiating how long it will be, take me to do that thing. <laughs> I have to get that little jab in there from the contract negotiation. But, uh, and then getting feedback allows me to learn about my experiments and requires that I de delivered some value um, and, and, well, delivering value via working software. And that feedback guides that, again, the next most valuable thing to do. Um, you know, and so things that we look at for, you know, improving the ways to do these things, you know, are we talking to the right person about feedback? Is it an internal stakeholder at a, the company? Is it um, a back-end service team that, you know, we need to talk to? Is it the actual end user? <clears throat> And the important thing about experimentation is that this is like something that the whole team does together. Um, you have to be, you know, you have to all have to be on the same page, collaborating, having that shared understanding. So, you know, you can't just have one person doing this thing over here that's not building to the shared understanding of the team. And it's not really a, like a trusting or a safe environment when you feel like somebody else is doing some experimentation without you. <clears throat> so, kind of want to get into now to like, you know, when things don't feel right. I'm hoping that my examples here will, you know, demonstrate like understanding, demonstrating that the understanding of the core concepts kind of get me out of the hole instead of trying to know like if I'm using Trello or Scrum or, or whatever. <clears throat> Um, in this first scenario, um, I, this is my one of the client projects I worked on. Um, we had a QA person on our team. Um, there was a lot of sort of like debugging, and you know, this was um, the QA process was pretty involved. Um, so there's always that little um, tension between delivering something and QA signing off on it, and you know, it's. Sometimes it can be a challenge, but there's definitely value in having that QA person. Um, and the, in this situation, you know, we ended up with lots of acceptance criteria in order to deliver or to be able to call a particular story or unit of work done. Um, and so we were just kind of getting mired. The team was kind of getting mired in these cars that had just kind of like grown over time because of additional acceptance criteria being added. Um, and initially, I was, re I was reluctant to um, split up the card because I didn't feel like, you know, here I am thinking in my head, well, if I do this thing, if I satisfy these three acceptance criteria, that's not a unit of, there's no value in then in that, in delivering that by on its own, like I needed this whole thing to be done. Um, and so I was getting hung up in my own head about that. So I was initially resistant, but the team was definitely sort of flailing and it was hard to feel like we were getting things done. Um, and it took a couple attempts to kind of figure out what to do here. Um, you know, at first we tried, okay, let's put checklists and so we can like update checklists on our, our, our JIRA tickets um, in this case. Uh, but in the end, we ended up just splitting everything apart and saying, okay, like we need to add field validation to this field. It's one ticket. And move it across the board and it's done. Um, so it really, you know, to me, like this was all about like, let's make our team awesome and let's 
listen to what our team is saying, you know, and do the individuals over the, the process. Um, and the team did feel better about this, um, you know, and we got stuff done, so it was good. <clears throat> um, the next sort of thing is listed requirements, and this certainly sounds like waterfall, um, and we avoid listed requirements, but it happens, it sneaks in uh, in different ways. Um, so a lot of times, you know, we'll see a new client that's been, you know, they have this idea, they've been thinking about this thing for years, right? Um, but they're now getting the opportunity to engage somebody and, and get something done. Um, so they have this list of things and they have their own idea of how it should actually work. And this can, also happens in larger companies too where a particular, you know, department or business owner has been trying to build a business case to get their work done. Uh, and so they have this idea of how things should work. <clears throat> the other piece um, is that, uh, the other time this kind of sneaks in is when um, backlogs grow in size. You know, uh, there's this concept of like, oh hey, we should do this at some point. Let's throw it in the backlog. Uh, I, I'll say I despise large backlogs. I mean, that's kind of hard wording. That's pretty strong wording for me. But, um, you know, anyways. So the problem with that backlog grows in size um, is that things get put in there. They never get prioritized because of whatever reason. So people lose context on that thing. And it doesn't, and the things sitting in the backlog don't get updated with organizational or company changes, you know. So there's this, becomes this list of things to do, and sometimes people are tempted to like, oh, hey, I don't have anything to do today. I'm gonna grab something from the backlog and work on it. But like, it may not be prioritized well. And you can mitigate some of that by having, you know, like a, a scrum master or a product owner who's always keeping an eye on that stuff and keeping things there, but I, uh, having a, to me, having a large backlog can get into this list of requirement thing because context is lost over time. Um, so really, the you know, and the thing, and this is the tricky one too, because you know, like when we, when we, for us especially, sorry, um, you know, we get a new client, they say, yeah, I want to build this thing. Here it is. Like, build me this, and it's, it takes some discipline to say, okay. This is awesome. Let's step back a little bit and let's let's map this out. And, and this is where we use story mapping um, as one of our processes to like map things out. It's like okay, and once you get things up on a board and a visual interpretation of what they're looking for, you can start figuring out what's what's higher priority and or it introduces more questions. Um, so it just takes some discipline to say, hey, this is awesome. Let's get our, we need to get our heads around it. We need to start collaborating. We need to reintroduce this collaboration between a customer and learn what the problem is before we start tackling the solution because the solution is, most of the time, is not valid anymore. <laughs> like, you know, from a pessimistic sort of cynical side of things. Um, so yeah, like I said, the, the important thing here is to really reintroduce that customer collaboration, deliver something quickly so we, there's something to get feedback on and go from there. <clears throat> so those are really the only two things I had um, as far as like problems. Um, and actually this kind of brings me to the end here. Um, but like for me, like I said before, I think it really for me, it's important to understand those agile concepts because it lets me handle these problem situations when they come up. You know, I don't throw another tool at it. I don't, um, I don't know, I don't panic. <laughs> Maybe that's the other thing too, don't panic. Um, and you know, I think those agile concepts really get, and while they're hard to describe to somebody who asks if you're agile, um, like, oh yeah, we make people awesome. I mean, like, <laughs> what does that mean? Um, you know, so it's, it's hard to describe, but it's, it's, 
it's important when you're actually practicing software delivery and, and talking with your customers and working with your team. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I can, I also want to, I'm gonna pick on some of the Gaslight people that are here too. Um, please feel free to hang around for as long as you'd like um, and chat with us. Um, I know, well, see, Jeremy, I'm gonna pick on back in the back. He, he, if you need book recommendations, he's got, he, like, he's, I d can't understand his brain yet for um, remembering which book is which. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hey, Jeremy, do you remember that book about the thing? He's like, oh, yeah, that one. So, <clears throat> um, and Peter is here, too. Peter's our CEO. He's actually, I think he's really great about, um, uh, especially when looking at some of the tools around Kanban and even in Scrum, just kind of understanding some of the metrics that you can get out of using those processes um, and what the metrics can do. Like to me personally, um, I think they're more of a, a, a diagnostic thing. Like I don't really care so much like about performance day to day, but like when something's going wrong and I'm trying to figure out what's going wrong, there may be some metrics that kind of help with that. Like, you know, if, uh, <clears throat> if our acceptance column is not being cleared out soon enough, then that might show up in some sort of report that, or, or chart that lets me say, hey, client, um, what can we do to kind of speed up the acceptance process here because it's affecting a lot of things. Um, so yeah, yeah, go ahead.